now we have our screen intentionally focused upon nature because we sort of get along with nature because there's no one to argue back so even if the screen is irrelevant well we don't care we want to talk about how we believe the west lies about ukraine where basically if not lies but basically a truth but only 50 percent of it crimea undeniably crimea has a convoluted history as the we're going to get some terminology incorrect but the general gist is correct the autonomous ukrainian oblast that was under the control of the russian constituent soviet state so that's not the exact name the russian federate of soviet whatever whatever the soviet union was the constituent federative system on paper russia is, was just another co-equal member just another member of the soviet union think about a communist version of a more effective european union oh germany is just a part of it france is just a part of it well the soviet union was really in some ways a russian empire but yet legally it was constituent republics so crimea was controlled by the russian the russian state within the soviet union as a symbolic gesture they handed it to the ukrainian soviet state not the exact terminology but it's just more convenient let's call you let's call ex former ukraine the ukrainian soviet state russian soviet the, the former russian soviet state so you had this soviet union this federal communist federal government so to speak sort of basically settling the disputes uh say if new york or new jersey has a dispute about the statue of liberty whatever you know basically it's kind of like this okay you know what the in, in the name of the federal government ellis island is now handed to party a from party b or party b from party a that's just an example okay so crimea had a similar situation so this idea that um crimea out of the blue uh basically was out of the blue this whole affair erupted between ukraine and russia is incorrect it's a half truth it, it's true but it's half true why was, is ukraine in a, such a dilapidated state at the onset of the russian invasion this goes back to historical memory and the thing is when you don't need friends the benefit of not needing friends is you can speak whatever the hell you think um so basically the when the ukrainians when the soviet union dissolved the russians and ukrainians to the best of my knowledge they saw themselves as brothers in a fraternal cultural brotherhood there was no expectation that ukrainians and russians would no longer be fraternal best friends for life so there was no preparation that russia would be a potential enemy and i'm we're going to post the link in the description you former ukrainian president and vladimir putin celebrating some type of independence day parade for ukraine and they're singing katusha so basically the undeniable half truth that the west won't tell you is the other half truth that russians and ukrainians the united after during the split up of the soviet union they were not enemies they there was no preparation for any conflict with russia because that was unthinkable russia was one of the security guarantors for ukraine so what i think happened over time the ukrainians with the western media with new information there is a genuine democratic will for ukraine to become a western european uh political system just like today's deutschland today's france today's switzerland 
within the new generation, there was a revolution. They, they, they don't want to be aligned with Russia. But here's the catch-22. Because of the democracy, they didn't, it was spontaneous, and hence the backlash. A communist Ukraine, like a communist China, would do things a little more sneakily. A communist authoritarian Ukraine that wants to break away from Russia would do as China does. Oh, you know, basically we're building all these military munitions plants in the, in the, in the uh, West. Then Putin comes to you, Ukraine. Why are you building all these munitions? We're, we're best friends for life. I'm your protector. Oh, we're, we're building these defensive plants, these, these factories, building our own, uh, you know, military war materials in case the enemy NATO should dare attack our common brotherhood. So a, a communist government would, wouldn't just out of the blue say, Oh, there's been a democratic revolution in Ukraine. We 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 no longer like Russia. They would they would plan, 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 and then communist Ukraine would tell communist Russia, "We no longer need you, and we have we have all the armaments to defend ourselves." Imagine if Ukraine all of a sudden came out and said, "A communist Ukraine, a communist mind does this." They don't they don't come out and open. Just uh, out, basically. 20 years of planning, 20, day one after year 20, they come out and say, well, we have a strategic deterrence, we're going to join Europe. But the conundrum for Ukraine is that they had this democratic revolution. It's the will of the people, the will of the people, the will of the people. But that's the problem in a democracy, it's too open. The, then all of a sudden, they then they have, they choose their politicians. They want to break away from Russia, but when they want to break from away from Russia, they did so in a completely unscheming, unprepared manner, which means without Western aid, Ukraine would not have prevailed. So the half-truth that I think Ukrainians in the Western world are telling you, we're a Western European country, our values are Western, correct. Today's Ukraine, that is what Ukraine has become. But it wasn't always like that. Because the transformation, the cognitive transformation in Ukraine was so sudden, all of a sudden they find themselves completely unprepared, ill-equipped, minus massive Western support to deter Russia because generations ago, they never conceived themselves as outside or hostile, outside of the, of the, of the greater fraternal framework that Russia is trying to build. So all of a sudden, they say we're West European. Well, your nation wasn't prepared for it because your past generations, quite frankly, did not see themselves. We are all West Europeans. We are West Europeans. We are West European capital brutally attacked by this, you know, basically this, this, this golden horde. That's what some Ukrainians commentators have thought of. It, it's it, of course, that's nonsense, that's racist, but Russians are not part of a golden horde. But if it was a golden horde, even more advanced, because the golden horde, Mongolians brought the fought Chinese guns. The golden horde, Mongolians brought Chinese guns to the rest of the world. So without the golden horde uh, stealing the gun from China and with the Westerners stealing the gun from the golden horde and stealing it from China, yeah, everybody would, basically, everybody would still be, uh, you know, basically, they would still be Teutonic Knights.